guys, this is Mike, and I'm here to talk Alter Quest as the game's Kickstarter kicks off. If you haven't already seen, Blacklist Games sent me a demo copy with just one quest, one set of enemies, and two heroes, and I've been playing it a lot. I'm generally a fan of the modular deck system the Saddler Brothers have developed. Street Masters was one of my top games of last year, and I still really, really enjoy it. Brook City wasn't quite as much of a hit with me, but I still really enjoyed the modular decks and how you could kind of mix and match different elements. So where does Alter Quest rank, and does it stand up as a great dungeon crawler in a really crowded genre? Well, to save you the suspense, in case you don't want to watch the whole video, Alter Quest, I'm pretty sure, is going to be my top game in the modular deck system. Now, I really want to stress, it's super hard to tell any of this with just the demo I've played. I've only seen two heroes out of all the ones they're going to design, played one quest, so take everything with a grain of salt, I only know what I've seen. But let me talk you through some of the awesome elements of the game that I just fell in love with. So first, with all these games, and with Sentinels of the Multiverse before it, I love the uniqueness of the characters, how varied the decks feel. I love that the game feels new every time you play a new hero, and it gives you new strategies to try, you have a new deck to kind of learn and engage with. But more than that, especially in this game, Ultra Quest, I feel like the puzzles and the tactical choices you have to make from turn to turn are so detailed and so nuanced and so engaging, both solo and multiplayer. A lot of that comes not just from the great card play that you already expect, but also from the new Alter Dice mechanic. Now yes, you've seen something like this before in Mage Knight or uh, Myth Dark Frontier if you got the chance to play it. I haven't. But the way these dice change the evaluation of the cards in your hand, some cards become stronger because of these symbols that make them stronger are available, is really fun. Also, the risk-reward is really great because you'll roll a die to activate one of your abilities and you'll just have to hope that it doesn't roll the enemy's favorite symbol and mess up your plans for later in the turn. Speaking of dice, while there is some luck in the altar dice, there's actually very little luck in the resolution dice system. Now this is similar to Street Masters, similar to Heroes of Terranoth, and basically identical to Brook City if you played any of those. Even if you don't immediately kill an enemy or immediately get the result you wanted, you'll get some tokens to help you pass a result later on. This means that no rolls in the game feel like a complete drag, make you just depressed about your life. Now my main worry with that is that dice rolls wouldn't feel like they mattered because you'd always have good success, but that's basically fixed with the critical result because it lets you keep on adding more dice, it keeps on exploding, and that definitely still gets you that really exciting like boom moment of amazingness that you want to see in a dice game. Something else I wanted to mention, and this is huge, the cooperation in this game is off the charts. I hesitate to say this because I haven't played every dungeon crawler out there, but this for me right now has the best cooperation of any dungeon crawler I've played. Pretty much every card I play, every ability that I use, has some way to help another hero. Moving them, giving them tokens, dealing damage to their enemies. It's really crazy how every turn you get to really work with each other in such an intricate way. To finish up the pros, I love the miniatures, especially the ones for the features in the room. I'm sure a lot of you are already getting this if you're looking at the Kickstarter page, but the, the Hero Quest vibe is so strong, and that was a huge part of my childhood, one of the first dungeon crawlers I played heavily besides Dungeons & Dragons, so big plus there. Also, for me, and this is kind of a personal thing, the map, the just one big board, I like it a lot. I find in the vast majority of dungeon crawlers, one tile doesn't really mean much compared to another. It's all just about the distance from enemies that you have. So the fact that for this game I don't have to organize and dig through like 50 tiles or 100 tiles like I do with my big collection of Imperial Assault, for example, is definitely a plus. I don't really feel like I'm missing out on anything. Now, I don't want to give you the idea that the game is perfect for everyone. Yes, I'm kind of a Blacklist fanboy, and Street Masters is awesome, and I love this game, so, <laughs> you know, you're getting the very positive opinion here. But the game won't hit for everyone, so let me kind of go through some of the things you might want to be concerned about. First of all, the game was definitely designed with one-shot gameplay in mind. Now, I've seen a preview of the campaign system, and it looks really cool. It has really detailed narrative, you get like branching choices, you can upgrade your equipment or get completely new equipment to change the way your character plays. Really neat. But that being said, clearly the game is being designed primarily with one-shot play in mind, so if that's not what you're in for, I'm not sure if this is the game for you. Also, probably the biggest caution, and if you watch my playthrough of this or Street Masters or Brook City, you'll get a good idea of what you're in for, and that's the kind of overhead and the potential fiddliness of dealing with the cards on the table. I'm an old GM and DM for RPGs, so I have no problem with any of this, but 
if you don't like reading a bunch of cards and kind of going through several steps every turn to handle what the AI does and what the enemies are doing to you, then I'm not sure you'll enjoy the process of this game. If at least one player is a veteran of the game, it's pretty easy for them to run a lot of the downtime stuff and it can go very quickly. Or I think it's entirely possible to kind of divide up the task, like have one person run the villain and one person run the uh, quest cards and that can also make it pretty easy. But definitely a caution, this is not a game that I would sit down with four entirely new players, none of whom have played it before, and just try to run through it cold. I think that could be a train wreck. Another thing to think about is that while it's a one-shot game, the games are not ridiculously quick. They still take a little while. My solo games have been about 45 minutes to an hour, and I'm pretty fast, so it might be a bit over an hour for an average solo player. At higher player counts, like three or four players, I would fully expect to play two to three hours per mission. Now, this gives the missions a really epic feel, and you feel like you've experienced a lot of stuff by the time you finish, but, you know, if you want a really super fast game, this isn't necessarily it. The last thing I want to note, and this is going to totally go to what kind of dungeon crawl player you are, but at least in the quest I've seen, the game doesn't have very much a uh, feeling of kind of a narrative exploration and being surprised by things you discover. Yes, you're drawing enemies and traps, and you're seeing uh, quest cards show up in different orders, but, you know, basically you know what you're trying to do, you know what the objective is, and nothing's going to really blow you away in terms of exploration. So if what you're really looking for in a dungeon crawler is a game where you, you know, go into a new room and have to read an entire page of text and set up all these crazy things and a dragon you had no idea was going to be there suddenly pops up, again, I'm not sure this is the dungeon crawler that you're looking for. But overall, I love Alter Quest. I want to play it more. I'm sad that I have to send my copy away to another reviewer so they can cover it too. It's early to say, and I don't want to commit too much, but I fully expect that this is going to be one of my top games of next year. I think that's when it's delivering, uh, if not like my number one, because, you know, Street Masters was in my top two for last year. I see no reason why Alter Quest won't be in the exact same spot. I just really enjoy the gameplay. The puzzle is so incredible. I feel so clever when I play it. And that's probably the best thing I can say about it. You're going to feel cool, you and your friends, doing amazing stuff and surviving crazy dangers with every turn. So again, this is coming from me, someone who loves kind of more complicated dungeon crawlers, so go watch my playthroughs and make sure the game looks good to you. But if you like what you see, I think this is going to be a total slam dunk for anybody who gets to play it. Good gaming, everyone, and I'll see you at the next stop.